Welcome to everybody who joined me on the stream. Um, my name is Erika and uh, I thought we'll be exploring a little bit more uh, this project that was a user request um, and how to reproduce it in Spine. But I'll show you what we are going to do, which is an unrolling, unfolding uh, carpet animation which is really easy uh, but and that's why i wanted to do it in a short stream um but there's more that meets the eye i was talking about images and here we go there's the folder a folder okay it wasn't following and i guess i can show you it's just four images actually so we have this uh, carpet roll is it opening or no what have i done well, you get to say hi to the little owl here that follows the mouse. I'm going to show you that too in some other stream. It's in my plans. We have this isometric tube. Um, then we have the um, carpet in itself that can be replaced with whatever images you want. And uh, here we have the tiny um, middle part of the carpet, which helps simulating the carpet decreasing in size. And uh, this rolling part, which I added just because the, the user requested it. So let's jump into this project and let's start it from the beginning. I'm going to import this uh, JSON here. Yeah, I'm gonna create a new project and import it. Nice. So we have all the pieces here. You see that instead of making it in perspective, I place this part that I want to rotate front screen watching us because I'm going to put it into perspective once we uh, get it into the spine animation. We're going to turn the carpet into a mesh like this. And I was said this was uh, as I was saying that this was the first particularity of this rig. That's because you know I always advocate against using direct deformations. Well this is a different case. So let's create a new mesh which is also good. Because I'm leaving a little bit of space here. So it's close but not close. Cool. And we have our vertices. Now, as I was saying, we need to slice the various parts here of the carpet. So we're going to create some traversal, traversal lines here. And we're going to try to keep them uh, equally distanced. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, if you can make it harmonious, it's better. Now, I'm not going to place probably as many as I did in the original project. Like, this this could be enough to make a believable effect. Okay, so we slice it in many pieces. If you add more pieces, you get it, like, you get, you will get no deformation at all in these parts. But if you see some, it's actually believable because this is a carpet that is unfolding, so it's not too bad. Uh, and now I'm going to click the X because I like the mesh uh, and I accept it. You are accepted. And I'm going to also create a mesh for this other part, uh, the tube. Now we'll turn this into a mesh. Now let's see if Trace... Okay, Trace is working better now. I wonder why I just decided to suicide earlier. I'm going to accept this too. I'm going to remove these and this because I want to keep it super simple. We don't need anything too complicated at all. And I want to enclose... Oh yeah, here there's also an extra point. I just want to enclose uh, this part and this part so that they are separated. So I'm gonna create some additional points. One here and one here so that this part is Nice to separate. Now, I don't remember if this was enough, but I remember that I started doing this. So, I'll just repeat it and possibly repeat my mistake of uh, making this, but I think it wouldn't be too perfect to do it like this, so I'm keeping it like this. Now, um, so this carpet is unfolding, which means that this part that we have here is going to start from here, and we need to place a control that will control uh, the whole uh, rolling part and one that will control um, this little image that we have here 
and then uh, we'll have to deal with the shrinking so that it stays um, isometrical, as, as isometrical as possible, right? So we're gonna create a bunch of uh, bones. So I'm gonna create the first batch now, and then I'm gonna create the last batch that will allow this uh, image to rotate in perspective last when we're done, because that will be easy to add in case we want it or we don't want it. So now, um, we create first the controls. So I wanted to create that bone here. I wanted to think about the placement first. So I'm going to call this roll holder. I don't remember if I called it the same way the first time I did this, but you know, this is now roll holder in this uh, version. So we said that we need a bone here that will control where this image is, pla is placed because we this image will, is not going to be turned into a mesh. So I select roll holder, also select the image. I'm pressing control while selecting the image while I have the parent selected so that when I click here, it's going to be created exactly in the middle and already perfectly named so I don't have to deal with that. So we center this bone exactly in the middle. Now next, we, and we created the bone that holds everything together. Now I'm gonna replicate this bone because I love it. Oh, even better. I say, yeah, I'm in parent axis. I deactivate compensation. I create a new bone. And when I'm in parent axis, it's going to be centered on the parent. Yes. Uh, so uh, I basically created another bone exactly in that spot. Okay, so you don't get too confused. And I'm gonna replicate it again because um, one bone is going to be in charge of shrinking this uh, part of the sphere. So I'm gonna call it shrinking bone down because it's in the lowest part of this roll. And then I'm gonna duplicate this and call it up because it will be the other one. Okay, and we're gonna try to place it roughly in the same place here, roughly here. So I duplicated this bone two times. That's because the second time is for placing this image in the spot. So I'm just leaving it there. First, we bind this uh, roller to the two bones that we created. So we go uh, to the weights view, okay? My favorite view, in fact, and smiling. Um, and I'm going to bind this image here, not to the middle dot, that's first mistake, <laughs> uh, but to the shrinking bone up or down, both, both, what stupid dots I have. Okay, and now we're gonna change also the weights so that, oh no, they are perfect, because I wanted the weights in the upper part to be bound to this bone, and the weights in the lower part to be bound to this other bone. Let's start the animation, just roughly, and then we're gonna add the details. So we know that we want the holder to start from... Yeah, it's gonna arrive here, so let's say on frame 30, that's where it ends. And on the first frame, we're gonna move it here, at the beginning. Okay, that's why I placed it down, so it's easier to align. And now we have the animation of the unrolling uh, it's, a, it's just rolling in the right direction, which is cool and all, but then we want it to shrink. So if I shrink it using this bone, so it, that's, that's the result I get if I use it proportionally. That's the result I get if I use it this other way. And here, okay, let's try that. What if I scale it this way? Never mind. Um, Oh, yeah, but then it's not in perspective anymore. Like you say, who cares about the isometric perspective? Well, I care. So we're gonna do it properly. And now let's do it the way I intended to show you, which is we select both bones and instead we shrink those bones. Anyway, we can shrink this and now it is much better, but that's proportional. But the fact is that we can control its perspective by controlling, um, by scaling it in a non-proportional way. And because we're scaling non-proportionally both bones, 
we get a better result. So it stays isometric to some degrees. What I did was just to uh, move this down here and that will fix all my problems. Also because I shrink this, uh, it doesn't reach the other end anymore. So what I did back there was to fix this so that it matches the perspective again. That's cheating, yes. So we are going to create the missing keys now, but, but look at this, yeah, because there's no keys, it sucks. Uh, we are going to press the magic key, which is uh, Ctrl Shift L, so that all the keys that I just created here on the last frame are going to be uh, automatically created also for the other frames. And that created it for us. And it made me realize that this is not in the correct place. So I'm going to adjust it to be more forward like this, so that when my baby here shrinks, it's going to shrink nicely. Well, never mind then, I'm gonna adjust this too. And there we go, and now it's, it's rolling, we're rolling. So this is the first part. Now, of course, we need to make it unfolding. Now that's really easy. I don't usually endorse direct deformation of meshes, but this is for a good cause. First, because we didn't bind the mesh to any bones, um, so we are justified. Uh, now we're gonna start from the end because that's where it's unfolded completely. We want it like this, we love it. Uh, so we're gonna key the deformation of this mesh by clicking on the little key icon on the carpet that we selected. Now next, when it's here, you see it matches the other position that I created by total chance. And we're gonna start with the trick that I wanted to show you. So make sure to be in world axis, okay? And uh, we select this uh, this key and we press Ctrl C. Now we select the key that we want to match that key because we want to hide it and we press Ctrl V and then we select this one too and that places it exactly in that spot so they match, they match immediately and nicely. So we press Ctrl C here and paste and paste and you see it? Hidden, not visible anymore so for this last part we get the nice unfolding effect. Now, we have to go back and I wonder if I can cheat my way and just go straight to this. I don't see it because we have to do all the keyframes anyway. So let's see if we can make this a little bit faster by just pasting the deformations here. And as you see, it's just a matter of copying the first vertex and then pasting it repeatedly for all the other vertices that's why we want it to be proportional and you see because uh here we didn't set any key the effect is that uh this part is deforming more so if we wanted it to stay more in place instead of doing this i'm gonna move this keyframe away so that it's not interfering and it's uh, stuck in place and I'm gonna redo the same thing that I was doing earlier and that's why we're starting from the end instead of going already like in oops did I press ctrl c I guess I did instead of starting from the start and unfolding it because you know it's easier and now if I put this back here yeah now it works and this got us the carpet unfolding effect. And now for the finishing touch, we're gonna add the little rotating spiral here. Now, remember this bone too? Now it's, it's time to shine. So I want to center this around the bone. So I go in uh, parent mode and I just zero this. Oh yeah, I'm gonna zero you, see? Boom. And it's centered. Now, because this is too big, uh, we're going to uh, resize it. So I want to scale the bone. Yeah. And then the image down. And then use the shear to get this. Well, shear should be 30. All right. So this is the, um, the spiral that we have here. I remember I felt it was too strong in color, so I turned it down, but I'm gonna leave it as it is so you can see it better. 
Okay, so we're done with this, but we're gonna need another bone. The bone that is gonna perform the rotation. Cause just like in the windmill blades. Um, so this bone, we call it scaled bone, no touchy. And now we're gonna create a new bone on the pirate axis, so it's gonna be centered there, fantastic. And uh, uh, this bone is going to swear, so I'm gonna change the icon to this. I'm going to yeah, I'm inside of bones. Why can't I? Ah, it's already okay, fantastic. So I just reparent this spiral here to this one, which I call rot rotator. Rotator. Here we go. And now we're gonna make it rotate. So I'm gonna parent this to the shrinking bone down so that when this shrinks this also follows automatically okay so we we get it in the animation like this and now we're gonna make it rotate now rotating is super easy uh, we just key this here at the starting at the end then at one third we type in 120 you just have to remember these two numbers 120 and 240, which is the double of that, uh, which is a third of 360, because we need to give it at least two keys in the middle so it knows in which direction it should be turning. So I'm gonna copy this and make it spin a bit faster so that it's easier to appreciate. And that uh, is basically the end, we just need at the last frame to have these images disappear. So here we go, he no, the carpet stays, and uh, the middle dot and the spiral. That was quick, wasn't it? That's how you make the carpet unfold, I'm also gonna key it here so that you can see this a bit longer. There we go! All right, so I guess this concludes the stream and uh, thank you for, oh, I had to hit my microphone at least once <laughs> and it happened now. Thank you for staying on stream with me until now and see you next time.